this time we're opening up the public portion. Madam Clerk, please um, call the first speaker. Please uh, be mindful that um, there is a three minute limit. Um, as you can see, there is 21 speakers um, and we'd like to hear them all. Okay. Council President. Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Council President. Before you open up the public portion, I just wanted to make a, a brief comment. You know, the community leans on the council all the time in order to voice their concerns. This is the avenue that they feel as if they have to come in and, and speak directly to their elected officials, their elected bodies. You know, I'm embarrassed by the treatment. You know, we have a loss of life. We have a family that has lost a life. People express grief in many different ways. If somebody was crying, filled with tears, somebody hand them a handkerchief. If someone, we live in a community where we should really be accustomed to how people respond at this point. Right. To have family members escorted out the building, to have the building surrounded with barricades, it's an embarrassment. This, I'm, I'm sorry, please refrain, because I'm not doing it for any uh, applause. But this is the house of the people. It's not the White House. Do we have Trump here now? This is the house of the people. This is where people should be welcome to come and voice their concerns. And, you know, just to have, and, and the officers are doing their job, and we respect and appreciate the job that they do. But there needs to be more compassion. You know, Mr. Mayor, you, you, you said your door was open. They shouldn't have to come here. This should not be their place where they're voicing their concerns. We understand that this family is, is dealing with some grave concerns and issues at this moment. For anyone to be treated that way, it is, it's, it's an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment. I'll reiterate what I said the last, at the last meeting. It often seems that it's the African-American community coming to this microphone and receiving that type of treatment. Not just the African-American community, the African-American and Latino community that have to deal with this, these types of issues and they come into this microphone and get treated the same way. Everyone that's sitting here should be embarrassed because these employees work for the city. We represent the city. These are the people that voted us into these seats. We represent them. And for us to escort them out of the building is shameful. It's shameful. If we can't sit here and hear the concerns of the people, then why are you here? I apologize, Council President, and no. I know it's not any of your directors. I know you are not aware of what I, I was going to say place. to you that I don't think any of us are but aware of what you're saying. you have saying. family members being escorted out and, fe and feeling as if if they don't leave, they're going to be uh, pounced on. And that's not how they should be made to feel. When, we, when, when people are grieving, they should be met with compassion, with empathy, with, with, with a soft hand. They should not be met with that type of, uh, uh, of, of resistance. And it's, it's shameful. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to, uh, Councilman Jackson, um, please, please, I'm going to ask that you refrain from speaking, please. Um, Councilman Jackson, I'm. I'm hundred percent, and I'm sure that I know you're every not aware council. Of it. I know you're not aware of it. That's why I, I went outside. We are not aware, and I don't want anyone here to think. You know, I know as a council, as a council president, a council vice president who's expressing himself, sure he speaks on behalf of us, knowing that we uh, uh, we are compassionate. We we get pounded on a lot mm -hmm. over a lot of the things, and we please well, do council not. president, uh, let me be clear, and just to the public, this council does not direct the employees of the city, it's the administration that does. The police department answers directly to the administration. When we are here, we have the same level of frustration because our requests go through to the administration. And I wanted to just make that clear because I'm happy that the mayor showed up to hear the community's concerns, but this type of treatment is unacceptable. And I'm not gonna stand here and watch and, and accept and not say anything, turn a blind eye when people are being treated this way regardless of what the circumstances are. Everyone deserves to be treated with the utmost respect, especially in times of crisis. Especially in times of crisis. Council, Council President. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Councilman Jackson. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Cotton. No, I'm just, I just wanna to say to um, the administration that 
um, all the other eight of us up here did not know what had happened right. um, at all. And you know, we have a police director. We did not please, know. Please, you can't speak. Please. I just want to know. When a council I mean, member is speaking, please, you cannot speak out loud. And we just want to know um, from the police director what happened that for Councilman Jackson director, to say that. Um, Corporation Council, um, it, it, I'm sure there's. As you know, there was some noise outside. The crowd went outside and was inside the building. There was a disagreement between two family members. As a result of that, the police officers attempted to break that up. In okay. I'm, I'm okay. going to speak. Please. Please. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Speak, speak. Okay. okay. Wait, 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 wait. Please, please, please. We have to have order. Right. Because they need to know the truth. She went downstairs. Wait, can, I, can, I, can I make a point of order? Public, public portion hasn't opened, so if we this is where it becomes okay. problematic. We ask for information. They have a right to, to, to dispute it. That can be done during the public portion. Oh, but I we can't do the back and forth Lord, okay. to Without make sure that we maintain the I'm not going to come. I'm okay. So I'm not one, moment, one moment. We allow one moment. The we, uh, our corporation council is here for a reason. Okay. The conversation. Be, no, no, no. No, no. I'm going to let her speak. Absolutely. No, no, no. Sure. I, uh, what I want. Yep. Yeah, one moment, please. Basically, there was some sort of a skirmish outside. Whatever that was about, we tried to defuse that. In defusing that, some people come, came back at the police officers, challenging them. We have to keep order in this building. We're trying to keep peace. I can't allow people to run into the doorways or windows. We have to keep peace. I understand your concern, Councilman. I am compassionate. I am the same as you. But unfortunately, you're the first ones that ask me to make sure that there's control out there, control inside here. I have to keep control and order here, and that's what the officers are doing. That's okay. all they're trying to thank do. You. Thank, okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Director. Uh, Mrs. Well, okay, I'm, I'm going to say this one last time. It is very important that we keep a certain decorum here. Everyone that wants to speak, was allowed to sign up and you will have your moment. But please, you cannot speak out loud. You cannot do that. And specifically, if a council member is speaking, our mayor, our BA, our corporation council, please let us be respectful to one another. I'm gonna allow you to speak as, I, I'd like for you, I know that you, you started speaking, so I, I'm gonna allow you to speak. Okay, um, my name is Patrice King. I'm the mother of Jamie Glory. Um, no disrespectful, you wasn't out there. Um, do, wait, do this concern my, my what I'm going to speak or is this just explain no, no, what happened? No, no, no. You, you, you okay. said you wanted to say something. But, but I want you, to explain you're going what happened. Have, yes. Okay. Um, my son was outside in the cold. He came down here. And I had told her to go see if they opened the door for her. I don't know what they said or whatever, but she came upstairs. Like, five, not even five minutes later, they came behind her and they grabbed her. So she was like, get, excuse my language. She was like, get the fuck off of me. I said, hey, y'all hey, hey, ain't going to do this. Y'all already did enough to my son. Y'all would not put no bruises on this one. I got her. Calm down. I got her. And I let her go out. That's what happened. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask something, Mr. B.A. Why is the door downstairs locked? The door should not be locked. Okay, we have a public meeting here today. So I, I'm not aware that the door is locked. It's, it's only certain people could come in. They One say. moment, please. The police director shares that it's not locked, but it will become locked at some point in time because of the number of people in the room. Okay. So we have a capacity issue where you can't have unlimited people in here, so they do regulate the number of people who can come upstairs. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so um, should we just let her speak? Let her speak? Uh, should I let her speak? That was it. I'm let y'all finish with y'all um, list. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like actually, number six, and I don't want to be rude. No, I no. Mean, I'm actually going to allow you to speak first. Okay. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk, um, I don't know where she is in the list. Yeah, she's number six on the list. All right, um, I'm going to have her speak first. Okay. The public portion is now open, and our first speaker will be Ms. Patrice King. Okay. 
Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Patrice King. Um, yeah, I want to know. Not my address. Godwin Ave. Um, I'm asleep now because I need to go. I need to go later. Um, first of all, I want to um, give a big thank you to, how do you say his name? Mr. Flores. Forward? Charles Flores. Charles Flores. Flores. For, yes, whatever. How would you say it? I'm sorry to pronounce his name. For donating the help with the funeral, of course. Um, Ruby Kai, I appreciate your help. Michael Jackson, I appreciate the help you're giving. Um, if I miss anybody, want anybody name, I'm very sorry, but I'm giving y'all y'all thanks. But okay, first of all, um, I have a quest. A quest. No, I ain't gonna come with that. I just wanna know who, like, what cop killed my son? Is I'm gonna get justice, I'm gonna get answers? Because at the end of the day, yeah, I have other kids. And your cops, your police officer is harassing my kids. Like, my, my oldest daughter was so scared yesterday. My son was so scared. They was like, come here. He wouldn't come. He started running. Two he wound up calling the um, seizure. Good thing somebody knew my son, stopped and picked him up. He didn't want to go to the hospital. He too scared of the hospital. All that, y'all, with that meningitis bull crap, that ain't going to stop. That's going to stop because my autopsy it would be ready probably Friday. So, and then you, Mr. Mayor, anything you said, anything you hear, or anything you get, any questions, I mean, answers, I'll be the first one to know. Lies you tell. Lies you tell, and I fought, and I, I mean, I was out in the rain helping you. Lies you tell, you was on Facebook, I'm at St. Joe's Hospital, I'm getting tested. You getting tested? That means everybody need to be tested because at the end of the day, he been around everybody. If he ain't been around everybody, he been around somebody that been around somebody that been around somebody that been around somebody. So everybody in here need to be tested. Everybody. All that to y'all going to keep on saying, many judges, many judges didn't even break my son's boom cheeks. They didn't, they didn't do that. Many judges don't kill, did not kill my son. Many judges didn't need that bruise out him. So what question, what answer do y'all have next? What y'all going to come up next for? If in the time you put up here on this thing, the times don't even add up. Don't add up. And then y'all talking about y'all left him in good hands. He was okay. He was, he was just in the hospital. So what y'all trying to say, no, what you trying to say, because it came out your mouth, on your report. You trying to say the same Joe's did it. Because they added enough time, and then you say, oh, you left them there? Y'all, your officers left them there? And then you kind of say, seven minutes? You're a liar. I hate to call people a liar, but that's what you is. And you need not to be in this seat. You don't need to be here, period. Not at all. And then you say, oh, whatever it is, I'll help you pay. You ain't paid nothing. You dropped the check off, but it was going to get paid whether you did it or not. I appreciate it. But all that, oh, you, you feel sorry? You should feel sorry. What the hell you got a Facebook for? You don't answer, but you, last year, my, last year, you, my birthday, you sent me a happy birthday. But you, yeah, you don't want to know it? You want me to show you it? You want to remember, want me focus, let me put you back on focus. Do you? Do you? Because at the end of the day, I don't think you, I think you should give up on this. Somebody, we need to vote another mayor. Because at the end of the day, this mayor ain't doing nothing. This not, this, this mayor ain't doing nothing. Because he right down with them. Oh, he, yeah, he owned the cops or whatever. But at the end of the day, he right along with them. He right along with them. He, do, he know what happened. You know what you, you know what happened. And you know what cop did it. I ain't gonna say no name, but my lawyer will get to it and all that. Oh, your boy, your cops say they they do nothing, they maintain them. First they didn't have them. First they did not have them. But at the end of the day, y'all have to, what y'all call that? Use, yeah, use physical force. What next one? What you gonna do? And then you tell your officers, please deliver this to them. Don't come from my family. Don't. You already fucked up and fucked my son and killed him. No, I don't want to talk. Listen, babe, listen, relax. Say what you got to say, but just relax. Just 
say what you gotta say. Because then now everybody asking me, everybody asking me, you think I'm gonna get justice? Yes, I'm gonna get justice. I'm gonna get justice, trust and believe me. And when I get justice, it ain't just these cops going down. All y'all dirty, dirty cops and dirty all y'all, y'all just no good, no good. Ain't nobody sitting up here playing with y'all. Y'all play with my son like, and, lo and I lost them. Y'all will not get this chance to just sweep this under the rug. Under the rug. Y'all will not. I'm taking this all away. And if I got to take it all away until I die, I got other kids. I got other family. They ain't going to let this go. They ain't going to let it go. And at the end of the day, I don't understand. These cops keep on beating on these kids, these people. And then y'all just do what y'all do. Suspend them with pay or whatever. Like, cops got so many, like, so many charges against them. And what y'all do, pay them off? One million points something. Like, y'all, money don't mean nothing to me. I don't even care about money. Y'all take my baby, one of them anyway. But that's my heart, that's my backbone. I know where he go, I know where he do. He called me when he left. He called me when he, before he went to the hospital. So at the end of the day, I got everything and I'm gonna burn y'all ass. So you might, yeah, go ahead, say what you want to say, sweetheart. Excuse me, y'all, let's, let's let the mayor talk. Uh-uh, excuse me. Yeah. I say what I say. Let me, let Mrs. Let me King. Who want to respond? Mrs. King, he's yes, going to I'm respond. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Last week I told you that I'm here to help, and I am here to help. And that's why whatever it was, a phone call that I received asking for any assistance, I provided it. And I'm still here to help. I'm letting you know that Every day I'm on the phone with every agency asking for not just those answers, but the facts. Only fact that we have now is that you lost your son. And that is unfortunate. That is tragic. So let us wait for those accurate. Let's wait. For, I'm sorry. No, sir, I, did, sir, I, I didn't sir, put that on Facebook. Facebook. Sir, but that's on Facebook. my point is, no, I sir, for the family. Hey, sir, sir. So that's why I say calm down. So fear, hold on. I say what I said. Y'all get so the chance. the family, last week I said I, I'm here to help. For the last week I've tried to be as much help as possible, and I'm still here to help. Okay, I appreciate it. But at the end of the day, I think I'm the mother, Chart King, the father. You know, you, you got the check off, but it even in your name is in whatever I said that got, yes, the Flores. And then you gave, you didn't even give it to the mother or the father. You gave it to the uncle. The uncle. I had to find out by somebody that, that told me. And I had to call you to ask you. You told me, yeah, I asked you how much. You told me how much. But you ain't tell me who it came from. I had to find that out too. Because I said, thank you. Why I, I told you thank you? Because you dropped it off. I don't know. But at the end of the day, y'all have a nice day, but I'm going to fight all the way to the end. I ain't going to move back to Patterson, dump ass places. But I'll be back. I ain't going to Thank you. <laughs> Madam Clerk. OK. Um, uh, Mrs. King. Okay, one more thing. I'm going to just one. Mrs. Why King. you was on Facebook saying you at St. Joe's Hospital, you um, you taking a I actually never posted that. You can check my So page. who posted? It, it's it posted. posted. It posted. It posted. I saved it. I saved it and I sent it to my lawyer. It's not on the page. But I'm here to help. I, okay. That's all I'm doing. So I want to okay. see what help you're going to give me. I want to see if you're going to give up your officers because you know who did it too. Everybody have Thank a nice day. I appreciate you. everything y'all doing. Mrs. Everything. King. I'm have. I'm leaving. Oh, look, she wants the council oh, I'm sorry. No, I, what I just I wanted to say on behalf of the council, um, no words can describe what you're going through. And the same way you want answers, we as well. And we're going to make sure that you get those answers. I, I do know that you have an independent uh, um, autopsy being done. Okay, so I I I hope that we are able. And I know we will get to the bottom of this, all right? So I just want to say, um, you know, once again, my condolences. Thank you, I'll accept okay. it. Um, one more question, can I ask y'all? Um, y'all got the control over the cops, right? Mm -mm. The mayor, the, the administration. Mayor. Can you do me a favor? Can you get all your cops together? 
because then I'll start pressing charges. I'm gonna start taking license plates and everything. I promise you not. You ain't gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, y'all gonna have to get new cops when I get through with y'all. Okay. Don't mess with my little ones. Don't. Don't. Tell your officer, do not go to the juvenile detention and none of that. Please, I'm asking you. Yeah. I'm begging you. Cause that means everybody gonna, everybody gonna get it, everybody gonna get going down. And at the end of the day, I ain't making no threats. I'm just promising you. That's all. No justice, no peace. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Clerk. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Yes, Madam President. Next speaker on the list is Jamelia Lori. Can you repeat that? Jamelia Lori. Okay. Next okay, speaker, next speaker is Reverend Boyer. Reverend Boyer. His stated name and address for the record. Thank you. Uh, Pastor Alan Boyer, 2 Auburn Street, Pastor Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church. I'm here tonight on behalf of Ceasefire. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. Uh, I come to announce our, our next listening tour, which will be held in the third ward. And the Honorable Councilman William McCoy will be our host. Let me say a big thank you to Reverend Khalid that hosted us in the second ward last month. We had a terrific turnout, and it was a very, very positive meeting. And I pray that the one in the third ward will be the same. And just let me say on behalf of Remind everyone it's at School 26 on 11th Avenue. Right, at School 26 on 11th Avenue, January 24th, which is next Thursday. So I pray that many of the residents of the Third Ward is listening to me now, and we'll have a good turnout uh, because we want to hear what you have to say to help us and the police community reduce crime in your ward. So we pray that you all come out. On behalf of the family, let me give my heartiest condolences. I'm sorry for what happened, but just let me say something that the Apostle Paul said to us in one of his benedictions, if you permit me. Now may the peace of God, which passes of all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Then finally, brethren, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. May God bless you. Amen. God bless you too. Thank you. Madam Clerk? Yes, next speaker is Reverend Teague. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Corey Teague, 65 Prince Street, Patterson, New Jersey. Um, as you, you know what's happening, so I really don't have to go into great detail, but I do want to speak about one particular incident. A friend of mine was walking along Lee Place yesterday at about 1.05 p.m. She passed by a squad car number 808. There was two officers talking. One of them had on a skull cap. And the conversation ended with my name and some information about me and uh, quote unquote, we're gonna get that fat MF. That was an officer who said that. She called me at 110 and said, make sure you are careful when you're on the street because the police are making threats against you. I got the young lady's name, number. She explained, she, gave, she had the car number, she wrote it down, 808. The street was Lee Street. The time was 108 p.m. And she was walking past. She didn't want to make herself obvious. And she heard it. I'm not threatened by it. I don't care. Listen, I'm the type of person that I'd rather die on my feet than live on my knees. I'm not going to be subservient to anybody. I'm going to fight for the family. If anything happens, there's more than enough people in this room to carry the information further so that Jamique can get justice. No question. So, so if the goal is to try to shut down this movement, it's going to be a major failure. This movement's not going to stop, all right? We're here for the family, and we're here for Jamaica. Another thing about the prosecutor. 
It was said that, you know, I'm pretty much influencing the family not to go with the prosecutor, but you know what? I put a poll out on my Facebook page, and hundreds of people have, have taken this poll, and I asked the question, I'll ask it here. Should the Passaic County prosecutor handle the Jameet Glowry case? 5% said yes, and 95% said no. You go up and down the street and you ask folks about the prosecutor and her. Now listen, I understand that she prosecuted some police and some other police were prosecuted by the federal government, but finding drugs in the back, car, in the back of, a, of, a, of a car and somebody being beaten to death by a police officer are two different things. And quite frankly, I have nothing personal against her, but I think that this is far above her pay grade. This is a federal case. This is a federal case. This has to go to the federal level. And I'm sorry, I'm not confident that she's going to be able to do that because of all the higher ups that are going to be telling her to stay away from the case. There's rumors going around that the officer who did it might be related to Nellie Poe. And if that's the case, there's going to be some real pushback not to prosecute this case. So we need an independent prosecutor. We wrote to the governor, we put together a petition so that he could sign the bill that's already on his desk a3115 slash S1036, and that is the independent prosecutor's bill. All we were looking for was about 500 signatures. What we have so far is 1,371 signatures. People are tired. They're tired. They want something to happen. They are tired of this kind of thing continuing, and they called me to help them, and that's what I'm here to do. I don't care about what anyone says about me. I'm here to fight for the family, and that's what I'm going to do until he gets justice. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam President. Next speaker, Mr. Orlando Cruz. Please state your name and address for the record. Orlando Cruz, 239 Trenton Avenue. Thank you, Madam Clerk. <laughs> Madam President, honorable council members, and to the administration, I'm not going to take too much of your time because um, just like everyone else, I know there's more important matters to take care of. I come before you to what I expect to be a quarterly update on the work that's been happening in downtown Patterson. Uh, for those of you who don't know, closer, back up. Okay. For those of you who I've never met formally, my name is Orlando Cruz once again, and I'm the new district manager for downtown Patterson. As you've seen since the beginning of the year, uh, we have taken an initiative to rebrand um, the downtown area uh, by focusing on three points, uh, quality of life, beautification, and maintenance. Um, that has begun. Uh, you saw uh, recently the painting of the, the antique light poles, the painting of the electrical poles, the electrical boxes in silver. Um, the guys have begun cleaning out all of those planters throughout the entire downtown area that have been used as trash receptacles. Um, those are being prepped for springtime planting um, and quality of life issues. The guys are going to start going around and focusing on code enforcement in the downtown area. Illegal sidewalk vending, um, loud noise, uh, posters, etc. So I come before you, like I said, to what I expect to be a quarterly update. I bring this before you this evening. I got about 10 copies here um, to distribute to the council members. You'll see before and after pictures of the work that we've done. Um, I also attach my business cards for those of you who want to contact me. I look forward to meeting with each and every one of you, either collectively or individually. Um, Councilman Jackson, I look forward to meeting with you personally on a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I would like to hear feedback from the council on your concerns and ideas of what you want to see in downtown. Um, I mean, if there's anything that you guys need, feel free to contact me. Uh, last year, just uh, real quick, 300,000 people visited the falls. There's no, there's no reason why those people can't funnel down to downtown, shop, eat, and just have a good time. So we're gonna focus on cleanliness, safety, and, and beautification. So any input I can get from you guys um, will be very helpful. We've already established a good working relationship with the administration, with DPW, uh, on, on some work that we have upcoming. Um, the Downtown Special Improvement District is a private entity, uh, but we do have a pro public and private partnership uh, with the city. So I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Thank you. Council President. Thank you very much. Uh, before you speak, uh, um, uh, Councilman Jackson, I'm sorry, you said you are Ms. Orlando. Orlando. You said you are the... <coughs> District the, the Manager for the Downtown Special Improvement District. Previously, 
the city. The title okay. was, no, no, no. yeah, yeah. So previously it was executive director. District manager for downtown. I didn't hear. Special right. improvement okay. district. Yeah, the city. Jackson. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Council President. First, uh, Mr. Cruz, you know I, I've, I've had very, quite a few um, concerns about the, uh, the, the downtown Sid. I, I, I would have to say you're doing a phenomenal job this far. Um, it's, it's very much so noticeable. The removal of all of the, uh, the tags and, and the spray paint in the, in the uh, apartments for rent on the light poles is, um, is outstanding. I would like to urge you to meet with all of the, the, res the owners in the, in the district. Yes. Um, I've get, been getting several calls, especially from the young lady who, um, who came before the council before, who her taxes have, been, have skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. She has some concerns in, in, in the way in which she's being penalized. So if you can visit her and visit some of them, whatever support you need from me, I'm happy to give you. I am a little disappointed that the title was changed um, uh, uh, we'll, we'll discuss later on about the, um, the conditions of the salary. You know, you're a Patterson resident, which I respect and appreciate mm -hmm. that. Before, we had a non-Patterson resident, and just by simply making that one little change, you see a change in the outcome. So I, I respect that. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that, Councilman. I just wanted to add uh, one more thing. So the guys you see in the blue jackets around downtown, they're the company that we kind of subcontracted to do the work, they, um, the agreement was that they hire Pattersonians. That was something I was very adamant about. Uh, so they have done that, and in, uh, probably in a few weeks or so, you'll see their uniforms have the downtown Sid logo branded. Um, and I think what makes this work is that they're on the, they're on the ground seven days a week. Um, so Good. consistency is gonna be the key here as, as far as the code enforcement and keeping it uh, you know, clean. Graffiti goes up, the next day it's gonna come down. Thank you. Thank you. You've been doing a fantastic job. I also urge you to meet with Mr. Dave Gilmore, who does the-, uh, the I had a conversation with him this morning. Very good. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, next speaker, Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam President. Next speaker is Mr. Eunice. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Good evening. Hi, I'm Eunice, 55 Third Ave, Madison. I came here before you because of this issue that we lost one of the residents in Madison. We hear the news, uh, the FBI, they arrest five officers in Paris. This is a big sign to the administration. We have a police department is not a trust persons. They work there in this department. If there is five, they have been arrested. I don't know, this officer, they are to protect the civilian or just to kill the civilian. It's a, it's a shame. Uh, if there is five in one year being arrested, what about the rest? We have more than, uh, I think, 400 employees in the police department. 400 employees. Today, when I come in here to find a bark, I saw men, like uh, old Paris and police bar cars barking around this, uh, the building. When you call them for uh, an emergency, uh, they, I called the, like almost three months ago for someone who's barking his vehicle in my property. I called them at 12 o'clock, they show off at 6 o'clock. They called me, they said, oh, there is some officer, they came. But why they are here around the city now? We need the officer to protect us, not to kill us, not to abuse us, not to discriminate us. I have an issue with the officer two years ago. Same thing. We are, all of us, we are human, we are brothers, we are neighbors. If you feel or think you are part of them, the, your neighbors, it's mean you are like you using the same attitude, the Satan, when he, God, he asked him to submit respect to Adam, he refused, he said, I am better than him. We are all equal, no matter of your colors, your ethnicity. We are neighbors, we live in Paris, and we are Parisonians. This police department has to be renovated, you know. We have, uh, Officers, they collect over than 200,000. We have some of them 180, 190. Oh, I think uh, the third of our budget goes to the police department, fire department. The third, third of our budget. There's a lot of money. If we have a we have p department like that, they are not deliver the right job to protect the civilian, to protect the city, and we have a drugs in Broadway everywhere. 
We have those homeless everywhere in Paris. People, they are in the street, uh, panhandling. They asking for help every day. And, and uh, by my uh, Dunkin' Donuts and Rudy 20, at six o'clock in the morning, someone, he, have an, uh, he need a quarter. Where are they coming for? Where is the police department? And uh, we thought this mayor, he came to make a change. I think this mayor, he just, he came to pull more money from our pocket. Hire more people, more directors for downtown and here and there. And if he want to hire all his staff, uh, they, they campaign with him. It's okay, you could hire everybody. But to protect us and cut our taxes, not increase the taxes. A lot of people now, they complain about the housing renting. They, they pay for one bedroom, 1100, two bedroom, 1450. So Eunice? Yes, okay. Thank you so much, you have a good night now. Thank you. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Yes, next speaker is Mr. David Thompson. Your name and address for the record, please, uh, thank you. Good evening, Council good President. Evening. Before I start, I'd like to extend my condolences to these families that have experienced harm, hurt, um, whatever it is that it, for most of you that are here know who we are. Um, I'm, I'm the founder and executive program director of Halls That Inspire. We work with children every day. So these are our passion. Kids are our passion. I'm very, however, I am very encouraged. But don't let it be for just an incident like this. Do bring your children out. Show them the process. You may not agree with it, but the only way you're going to be able to make change and make change with a sound mind is you have to come and observe. I think this is impressive with the amount of young people we had come today. Um, but again, I implore you, bring them out um, just outside of this normal process so they can see how the process works. You want change? Come, observe, and uh, do give these kids an opportunity to see how this works. Now, I came to make a couple of announcements. Hopefully, I can just add a little sunshine, kind of take it away from where we are, though I know that may be difficult. Anyway, um, June, January 26th, we have an amazing award ceremony. We haven't had one in Patterson in four years. We have 61 students from Senator Frank Lautenberg School that we will be honoring uh, with citations from the State Assembly, citations from the City Council, this City Council, and citations from the county freeholders. Uh, we do want to honor our kids because so many times our kids are put in bad light. However, there are people and organizations out there and I want to say this to you guys that do care and love and nurture and tutor and mentor your kids as if it were our responsibility from the get. I know our organization does and I know of many more that really take the job that they do with children very serious. We do as well. And so I, I, I do encourage you, I'm inviting every last one of you to this January 26, 10 a.m. School 6, as it's formerly known, which is now Senator Frank Lautenberg. Uh, we will also be recognizing a couple of district superintendents from Newark and here in Patterson. Uh, so I do want to bring that up. Also, I want to make another announcement. We will be bringing to Patterson the first public mural arts project that will include every single one of you that are here. You will have an opportunity to actually put forth a hand in a visual, tangible change. We're in the early stages now, but it will be the first of its kind. And you guys, everyone that's in here, it won't be no roll call, but it will be a call to the entire city to come out and help us beautify our city with some positive message-based murals. So we can uplift our people instead of constantly laying in a quagmire of controversy or whatever it is that we sometimes, from time to time, find ourselves in. So I just want to invite you guys. The mayor, I, I was up at his office. We hope that he will come in and speak before our kids. We're definitely looking forward for you guys to come forward. Uh, I do want to extend uh, a special thanks to Ruby Cotton, Councilwoman Cotton, for uh, extending her services on behalf of the city council. So I just want to say thanks. Thanks for letting me come. And again, my heart goes out to all the families uh, that are now going through something traumatic. God bless. Oh, hold on, Mr. Oh. Thompson. One moment. Uh -huh. Where's my basketball? Oh, see, I, like there's so much going on. Like, I, there's a couple of baskets. Somebody else in here with a basketball, too. We'll get that. We'll get you taken care of. 
Thanks, right. listen, thanks a lot. God I, bless. I met you quite a few years ago. Council. Definitely, definitely, your work does inspire. I appreciate um, that. I see how the children get involved um, and their artistic ways comes out. So, so let me tell you. Yeah, and it's more than just art. Keep them busy. Right. They don't we get are. in trouble. Absolutely. God bless you guys. Council Councilwoman Cotton. Yes, thank you. I just want to say that um, Mr. Thompson now is um, doing work as public school number six. Six, which is Senator Frank Lockburg School. Correct. Um, and, and, and he's painting the hallways, because I always say children need to walk through hallways that are cheerful Same. and bright, because they need to feel comfortable. And, and having good colors around is so good for them. But also, I got another project that I think that we can work on. It's called Quilting a Crosswalk. And I just got the information from the lady out of mm. Newark, so I want to, yeah, I, well, I want to brighten up my fourth ward yeah. with with with, with brighten good. up the crosswalk. You'll be yeah. surprised what it looks yeah. like. Our focus will be on the train trussle that runs from train, uh, St. Joseph all the way down to Bunker Hill, the train trussle overheads and the underpasses. Well, there's also the very large brown wall over by the new senior citizen home on the lower end of Summer Street. We're looking to put some massive positive <laughs> colors and. <laughs> inspiring things that is uplifting. And the only way we want to do this, this is why we're having a flat back and forth with NJ Transit, is we want to do it with all of us involved. We don't want temporary uh, uh, banners put up. We want our people to come out and make the change to the landscape themselves. Thank you, Goblin. thank you. Have a good night, thank you. Madam Clerk, next speaker. Yes, next speaker is Mr. Melvin, Casey Melvin. Casey, I saw Casey, he left. Casey outside. Good evening, members of the council, mayor, BA, uh, corporate council, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen who are here assembled today. Um, who? As of January 5th, I just want to get straight to the point. I only have, I'll only have a few minutes. But I, I definitely want to thank everybody on behalf of myself, on behalf of members of the community, on behalf of those who are level-headed, who are upset, um, who are hurt, and those ultimately who want justice. I want to thank you all for being supportive. And can I have the council members' attention for just a few minutes? Only got three minutes, thank you. Only need three minutes of attention. Um, you all heard the mother come out here and she was passionate. And she was upset and she was concerned, right? Because one thing that resonates in my head, and I, and I understand her demeanor, her approach in regards to justice, because before her son died, the video we watched, she said, Mom, help me. Mom, come get me. Now, I'm, I, I'm a father, but out of all the people in the world that he could call to help, he called his mother, right? The gentleman also went on Facebook Live because he wanted the world to know, help me. He told a billion viewers he wanted help. He called 911 an institution designed to service and help people and told them somebody's trying to kill him. He walked into the, law for, uh, the police complex and asked for help. Then he went to the hospital and asked for help, expecting help. I think collectively, if I break it down point for point from beginning to the end, members of the community have failed him. Our society, our neighbor has, has failed him, and the system has failed him. Had we not given him the proper support that he needed, we wouldn't have this situation right here. So here we have a mother who understands all of that, right? She may not be able to articulate it as eloquent as most of us can, but the sentiment is there. So let's look beyond. Uh, the, the derogatory statements, the profanity, or what wasn't unclear, and look at the heart of the matter. Her son called her for help. Her son called America for help. He called law enforcement and now one, one for help, and he did not receive that. So my entire support, my endeavor, and those who are um, in a line with 
the way I feel. Our total objective is we, to receive justice for Jameek Lowry. We would like to have answers because um, there's a lot of questions unanswered. And I think I'd be doing myself and my community a, dis a disservice because right now in this day and time, the burden is upon us to make it better for the younger generation. And that lady has a number of children who live in this community, who um, have to endeavor through this, as you can hear us talk about the troubles and tribulations that they're experiencing right now, and they don't have the support that they're asking for. So don't misdirect for those of you watching, members of the media, uh, predators and agitators. Don't take advantage of this young lady and this family's weaknesses and try to monopolize off that, misconstrue it as she doesn't know what she's talking about. Because when you look at the overall situation, anybody with a little bit of sense knows that something is not right. And we talk about accountability. Um, we have to be accountable, we have to be responsible. And notice that I said, everybody plays a role in this young man's demise. Everybody, nobody's exclu excluded. And every penalty should be divvied out accordingly. Not too much, not too less, but at the end of the day, we hold our administration, our law enforcement, our medical professionals to a higher standard. You guys took an oath to uphold the Constitution, and within that Constitution, you are afforded life, life most importantly, and liberty. And his life, he was deprived, his constitutional rights, his right endowed to him by the Creator was denied for whatever reason. So as an open and candidate and listening and intelligent public, we like you guys to expedite, if possible, any type of revelation in regards to what happened. And not just an autopsy, because an investigation is required too. We need all the data that we can compile and turn it over to whatever authority um, is handling the case, but also make that information transparent. I don't, I don't think that's a heavy ask. You know, I'm, I'm coming here in all humility um, in representation of mothers like her, fathers like her, and children like her that I frequent with every day. Ultimately, everybody needs to be accountable. And we're asking our administration, I mean, and follow up with what Jamik said, help me. Asking all of you to help Jamik Lowry get justice, his family receive closure. Now, I recently put a post out there in regards to any legal questions. Please, please do not ask the family anything in regards to legalities. Who did what? what time this happened, what was going on, that's all legal issues. They have an attorney. The attorney is Caitlin Robin and Associates, LLP in New York City. They have an office in New York, um, in Manhattan, in Brooklyn, in Manhattan. So I'll say it again, Caitlin Robin and Associates, LLP. Thank, thank you right. very much, Mr. In, in two more seconds and I'll be done, Council President. I appreciate the courtesy. Um, they're also, because during that tribulation, the mother, I'm gonna be personal, she was so much in the rust that she only took two outfits and traveled out of state to get there. She, made, she as, as emotional as she is, she is humble. The family will need some real support. If they have a GoFundMe account, and the GoFundMe uh, account is Jamique, the Jameek official Jameek Lowry Fund. You can find it on Go, GoFundMe if you search um, Jamique ja, 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 Lowry. They have an email, justice for Jameek. Jameek is spelled J-A-M-E-E-K, the number four, at Gmail. And they also have a number, 862-591-3963. And that's so we can compile all the information, all the questions, and people have a direction now where to send support from. Because the family, Repeat they're the not number. saying it, but I'm saying it. Repeat the number. They need it. The number is 862-591-3963. So if there's information that the family needs to find out, if you can't get them personally, you can email it to that address. It will be sure that they get it. If there's a number that you guys need to contact them with, there's no, there's, there should be no more excuses after this in regards to uh, disseminating information. It's 862-591-3963. And again, the GoFundMe, because um, I mean, I've seen, People are, like Eric Zimmerman raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
right? So we need to support the family financially. They, they have some challenges and they need support with, all right? And um, I want to just thank you for that. I know I missed some things, but I want to thank everybody's patience. Mayor, starting with you right now, sir, you have a very, very hard job. You know, and um, I don't think they're not a family of, of, of to request certain things. All they want you to do is respect the family and everybody else respect the family. Their son, he's dead. Please do not support any negative rumors or allegations and, um, and everybody else and associated with that. And the last thing I got to say is if something happens to me, I need a family to advocate me like that family because we all need to give it up for that family. But they're doing a great job in keeping the torch lit and all those other organizations who are doing a great job as well. Black Lives Matter, Corey T, the Nation of Islam, and other groups who are keeping the torch lit and not letting it fade out. So I want to thank you. I appreciate the courtesy, Council President. Thank, thank, you. thank you again. And thank justice you. for Jamaica. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next speaker. Yes, next speaker, Mr. Chris Mohammed. Please, I'm going to ask that the rest of the speakers be mindful of the time. Um, there's still, uh, I think, about another 10 speakers, and we still haven't finished uh, our items. Thank you. Next speaker. Good evening. What we've been seeing across the United States with police brutality, with police killings of unarmed black people, men and women, across the country has hit home in Patterson. And I've known the mom since we were just little, playing, and the whole family. And the community is hurt, and the community is justifiably angry. And justice is what we seek. There's a cry, no justice. There's also justice or else. What is the or else? I've heard Zelly say, if we don't get justice, shut it down. My people who have been afflicted for over 400 years is still crying out for justice in 2019. If justice is not served, if the facts are falsified, and if our character is smirched, which it has been, there will be an all else. The people, our people from this community who came out in numbers will not be intimidated by the vicious acts of police macing us. They got this canine dog unit stationed out all around here tonight. Why are the dogs out? There's a family here in a community here just crying out for justice and for respect. If justice is not given and served, our people are going to separate from having any type of faith in this system. Many of them already do, but there will be a whole lot more. There are a lot of young people. A lot of young people hurt and want answers. And from that video, man, that attracted the whole world right here, Patterson. What are we going to do? Are we going to go down the line of what we've been witnessing? Or are we going to treat this case with respect and not put out rumors? and lies and try to intimidate leaders and movements, locking people up. I saw a, a, a post about, you know, protesting in the city that 
this type of reaction never happened to other, other uh, protesters in this city. Why now? All we want is justice. And the biggest all else is the God I serve. He sends rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes. And he will answer. See, because those dogs can't stop that. You can't lock him up. He will send, just watch the weather and see. You think we need money in this city now? By the time God gets through with the weather, he's going to send to this city if justice is not served. You think we broke, we're going to really be broke. Heartbroken and economically broken. Justice or else. Thank you. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Yes, our next speaker is Mr. Loinel Mohammed. <coughs> Greetings. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. I want to first give um, deep respect to the Lowry family for the pain that they are going through. Sir, your name and address for the record. Brother Lionel Muhammad Patterson. Again, I want to give deep respect to the Lowry family and the pain that they are going through. And, um, you know, it, as you see her up here, you know, that's my sister, you know, and you, you, you can't feel it till it happened to you, or it happened to somebody in your family. And then when it happened to somebody in your family, then everybody wants somebody to do something. Well, today, this tragedy that has occurred has, I believe, done lit a torch in the black community. And while I'm on that subject, in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32, it says, and I quote, that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Right now, we're looking to be free from the fix that's going on right now, the cover up, the smoke screen, the meningitis broke his nose lie, and all that stuff that they do. Because every time that a black man or a black woman gets killed, they always get away with murder. Now, I don't know if the police did it, but I know it don't look damn good. If I got my daughter in my custody, and I come home to her mother, and my daughter ain't right right now, I think my mother will want to say something to me about that. I want to take up real quick the rest of my time, and I mean no disrespect to any other people, but I want to talk to the black man and black woman in the city of Patterson right now. Now some of you may be feeling a little funny right now because I said that, but that, this type of killing ain't happening to you. But it's happening to us. And it's not just happening to us, they get away with it every time. But if I ran the, the call, if I call the word right now of how many times police brutality and people have killed us and not with the jail, we would be here till at least about 3 o'clock this morning with a lunch break. We are asking that all black people, and all, if you're in the city of Palace and the surrounding cities, we, are, we don't want to call you the sleepwalkers anymore. Sleepwalkers are those who, they're not physically sleep, but they ain't involved in the fight. They, they do it from a Facebook position. We are asking you if you're a plumber, if you're a lawyer, if you're a maintenance man, if you work for DPW to join our movement. We want this moment to be the movement where they ever, never, ever kill another black man or black woman and think and have the audacity to think that they're going to get away scot-free. We ain't never going to stop this. We ain't never going to quit. If you ever had any pain in your life, when you see somebody, a mother, that outlives a child, 
All right. This is a call to black people. It's your turn now. In the Holy Quran, it says, Allah will not change the condition of a people until they first change themselves. We got to stand up. We got to wake up. We got to be men. And if they kill one of they can't kill us all. And again, I'm not saying the priest did it. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a prosecutor. But something happened right then. That woman, ain't, she ain't going to see her son no more. She ain't coming back. So we know the fix is on. We know the smoke screen is here. Why? Because we done experienced it before. So you shall know the truth. And the truth, we pray to God, set us all free. Thank you for Thank listening. Thank you. Next speaker is Delina Queen. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Peace, family. Selena Queen, Patterson, New Jersey. I don't often lose my composure, but I, I'm feeling like really heated up and emotional today. Um, and the brothers, thank you brothers, have really covered a lot of aspects, so I just want to speak about the phone call that I got from my brother. And he said, I am so concerned, I'm so worried, you got to do something because I'm a black man in this city and these are the same cops who are going to stop me. When I drive my car, I knew this kid when he was born. I knew this kid. I know his family my whole life. This is not somebody from even next door in Prospect Park. This is right here in our house. We listen to it on the news every day, practically, right? Um, and this is really very personal. And I said to my brother, I know, he was like, no, you don't understand, Lena, you don't know. And I said, no, I, I know, you know, because I don't often lose my composure, but today is um, difficult. So I want to say that um, in re reiteration of what our brothers have already said, that we don't actually know the whole story, but it is easy to come to conclusions as a black person in this country um, about what the story might be. When we see a person say, help me, and then read the news about their um, death, we understand a commonality that continues to happen in almost every city. I started to write about it because you know that's what I do. And for every letter of Black Lives Matter, I found that like three cities in this country um, that has experienced uh, brutalities um, by police. Now, that's also making the statement that perhaps that's, that police were involved and there is, has been no conclusion, but you have to understand, as a person of African descent in the United States and now in Patterson, it is very easy to feel like there's a problem that may include the people we hire to protect and serve us. And I will tell you the truth about my own children. I have four. You haven't met them all. But when my daughters and I talk about the possibility of something happening to them, I tell them, do not call the police. Because it's a gamble. We don't know who's going to show up. Now, we have police officers in our family who we love and respect and we believe are good people, and we have incredible relationships with community police officers who we love and respect, and we um, believe in that leadership, but it's difficult as a black person in America to take that gamble. Thank you. Next speaker is Santa Rodriguez. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Santa Rodriguez. I'm sorry, I lost my voice. I'm a little bit sick. Um, I live on 29 Watson Street in Patterson. Yes, I'm here tonight because as you see, I'm carrying the picture of my son, 
who was killed December 19th on 16th Avenue. And um, I'm already going to um, hearings and stuff in, in court, but the last time I went, they had told me that this guy wasn't supposed to be on the street. The guy that killed my son got released, and they never got the, the paperwork from him, and that's why he, he went on the street and killed my son. So I want help with that, I need investigation. Because I want to know why they didn't have the paperwork of this criminal and that he was released on the street and he got to commit the next crime and it happened to be my baby. I lost my son. So I want justice and I need some help with this because I'm, I'm not going to stop until I get to the end of this. I lost my baby and nobody will never give me back my baby. I'm suffering. My whole family is suffering. We're all here and we're all together. Because I'm here for her, and I'm here for her too. We all matters. We all suffer. We're not going to stop. We want justice. That's what I got to say. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. B.A., um, Mayor, can we please get information? And uh, is the yes, director here? Uh, Council President, just to be aware that the director had a conversation with them and also with me and they, he's following up with her okay. claims. Okay, yeah. very good. Thank you. Um, next speaker, please. Yes, Madam President. Next speaker, um, Lysadia Shades. Lysadia? Say it again. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correct. Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ming. Thank you. So to all the speakers, very important not to get close to the microphone because it's being distorted, so your message is not going to come across. Uh, we'll hear you, but the people out there will, will not be able to understand you. Okay, state your name. My name is Lisaida Sayas. Grisaida? Lisaida Sayas. Lisaida? I live in Patterson, and I'm here tonight because this is my son, Amir Ramos. This is what your officers did to him in March 29th, 2017. My son was only 16 years old. I'm not taking away that that night, my son did commit a crime. I'm not taking away from that. If my son did a crime, he got to pay for what he did. But that doesn't justify this. They almost killed my son. They was jumping on him. They hit him with the guns. They hit him with the stick. They were stomping on my baby's head. My son lost his dad in March 29, 2003, on Summer and Oak Street. He was murdered. I never laid a finger on my son. For the people that are supposed to protect and serve to do this, right now my son is incarcerated in Jamesburg. My son has to do 10 years with 85%. I don't think that's fair. If he did what he did, he could do his time. But 10 years with 85%, all we know is me and my kids together all the time. This is the first time that my son doesn't sleep in home. I have two other kids. I just lost my sister December 17. And that was his biggest fear, to lose her and him being locked up. They didn't even let him come. I don't think that's fair. Two days after that, I lose my cousin, Alexander. All we want is justice for Amir, for Alexander, and for Jamie. That's it. Nowadays, these officers think of these young kids be hanging out, they do their thing. <laughs> that does not make it okay for them to do this. My son's eye was stuck, his green eye was stuck. My son had like over 12 staples from front to back of his head. 
from chest to pants, his private parts were purple. They didn't give me a chance to be in the hospital with him. I come to find out that my son was locked up whenever he had him in the prosecutor's office in Tohoa at six o'clock in the morning. When this happened at 12 o'clock at night, he calls me at 10.30, mommy, what are you doing? He said, papi, I'm here watching the news. He said, you old as hell. We start laughing. He said, I'm coming home tonight. I said, okay, Bob, I'm going to be up waiting for you. He's like, I love you, mom. I said, I love you too. He's like, no, you hear me? For real, I love you. I told him, don't tell me that, don't tell me that. Because that's exactly what his father told me before he got murdered. Don't tell me that. I'm going to be up waiting for you. I fell asleep when I hung up, and I never, I, was, I never fall asleep early. At 2 o'clock in the morning, I wake up tapping my bed because all my boys have their own room, their own beds, but they all sleep with me. I'm looking for him. He's not there. I'm calling him, calling him, nothing. I go on Facebook, and uh, people posting, there's a dead body on Market Street and Carroll Street. There's a dead body on Market Street. I would have never thought that that was my baby there. Come to find out at 6 o'clock in the morning when my sister gets home from dialysis treatment that that was my baby that they had on the floor knocked out. They, they hit him so hard that he came, his sneakers came off. Two months after he got incarcerated, I received a white box in my home. I opened the box, I start throwing up because it's my son's clothes with blood, dry blood stuck all over his blood, all over his clothes. His smell with blood on top. But you're yeah, supposed to protect and serve. All I'm asking is for justice. They, they didn't give me their badge numbers. They didn't give me their names. Nothing. Right now I could be sitting, probably in a restaurant having dinner with these, with these people that we call our officers. And I don't even know that it's them that did this to him. I just want justice for Amir, for Alexander, and for Jamaica. And a meeting with the mayor whenever you're available. That's it. Thank you. Next speaker is Ms. Um, Hoffman. My name is Madeline Hoffman. I live in Flanders, New Jersey. I'm a member of the Green Party of New Jersey and a recent candidate for U.S. Senate with the Green Party. And I'm really humbled to be here tonight. I, not, you know, my voice is, is not coming from uh, residing or living in Patterson, but it's coming from being a resident of New Jersey and a resident of the United States and being concerned about social justice for a very long time. And I see and I hear what's happened here in, in Patterson. And I can't, every opportunity I've had to be here, I've come to support the community and the families, uh, especially the families of Jamik, because I only heard of the other two uh, tonight. The whole state is watching Patterson. The whole world, the whole country and the whole world is watching Patterson. And I have to tell you, Mr. Mayor and Council, that it does not look good for the people of Patterson, for the administration in Patterson. Why, when people are asking for answers, do they get maced? Why, when people are peacefully protesting on the steps of City Hall, are motorcycles sent in onto the sidewalk to disperse the crowd? Why are the leaders of the protest specifically targeted and arrested and put in jail? And so much so that the police department was saying the phone never stopped ringing that night because people around the state heard about it and wanted to make sure that the leaders of the protest were safe after what happened to Jamie. I'm saying it does not look good. This is not the kind of PR the city of Patterson wants. Instead of providing answers, 
There is speculation, always. I, I, I can't say it any better, and so I won't even try, than some of the people who've already spoken. There's always something, character assassination, of the person who was killed. There's a character assassination or other things floated to distract from the issue at hand. The issue at hand is what happened to Jamik? Why did he go to the police station for help and wind up dead? What happened in the two hours between his going from the police station to the hospital via ambulance, a trip that takes three minutes, five minutes with traffic? What happened? Those are the questions. Those are, those are the questions that need answers. That's what the community here wants. That's what the state of New Jersey, community around New Jersey want. Because Patterson, as others have said, it's not only here in Patterson that these kinds of incidents occur. They happen in Newark. They happen throughout the state. In fact, I'm, I hope you've all read the force report that was put out by NewJersey.com in November of last year. After 16 months of researching police use of force against uh, residents of New Jersey, disproportionately against African Americans. No surprise there. And here in Patterson, a black person is 78% more likely to have force used against them than a white person. 78%, and that's a conservative estimate. I saw higher figures based on some other factors. So I'm saying here as a, as a member of the Green Party of New Jersey that we're watching, that the whole state is watching. And if it breaks my heart and it breaks the heart of people throughout the state, it, this is something that the council and the mayor need to address and the police department need to address. Thank and you. I'll just say one last thing. I agree with what Donna said earlier, to consolidate the three departments at this time when there's so much scrutiny on the police department seems like a very bad, another very bad public relations move. So I thank you for your time and thank patience. Thank you, Ms. Hoffman. And thank we will you. be watching and supporting the residents of Patterson and the community and the families thank throughout you. this whole Search for justice for okay. me. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Next speaker. Next speaker is Ms. Mohammed. With God's name, good evening. Good evening. I just want to say two quick things. For those of you council members that sit on your community development committee, I want you to know there's some serious issues that you need to be talking to those nonprofits that are in serious trouble about losing their funding. I just want to put that on the table. Now, the other reason I'm here is because being a union rep for 24 years, when an incident happened, there's an incident report. It is a written report. And it only takes, you have a certain amount of time in order to respond. That supervisor has a certain amount of time to say exactly what happened in that incident. So you're not gonna tell me that you all don't know what happened. Because me, as a lay person, who is not a medic, who is not a lawyer, but my common sense tell me that something happened. And somebody knows what happened. And to leave this family hanging as if it does not matter sickens me to my heart. And it makes me feel that, and I know it makes them feel that you think they don't matter. And you can't continue to let them leave here because I'm gonna tell you, we the older people thought about fearing things when things happen. These young people don't fear nothing. They are not going to think about the consequences. They want answers, and they want them now. Yes. And I'm saying to you, Mayor, you need to do that, because I know that you know. Yes. And when you know that somebody knows something, you should demand that they give it up, because we know that they have been told what happened, because common sense tells you something happened, and you know that they know. So you should hold their feet to the fire because you can no longer sit back and just say, when I, 
I, all respect to Corporation Council and, and, and the business administrator when they tell you, no, they can't answer this. You need to ask that question. When they just asked you what happened, why they couldn't give that man some water, somebody was, who, somebody was getting ready to answer. And you were told, no, he can't. That hurt to the core that you can't even answer why. That child was begging for water and couldn't get it. See, working in the field back then, we knew why we couldn't get water. But this day and time, why the hell can he get water? We have to. We're going to have to do better, Council President. We got to. We are begging you to do whatever you need to do. Taking your council people, dragging and screaming. But you all got to do something. Because this is a powder keg right now. And if it blows, we all going to be held responsible. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Mr. Jackson. Donna Jackson, Newark, New Jersey, president and founder of Get It Done Crew, and I am the number one New Jersey Hellraiser. So when they say the state is here, the state is here. The calls have been made, Patterson has been put on notice, and y'all better wake up. Now I warned you about the merger, you did it anyway, they already complaining about police overtime. Watch how that budget goes out of control. I don't care what you did before. You guys are gentrifying this city at the same time. You watch the white boys walk on this police department that don't even live here because the residency rule is out the door. You guys don't do any check-in as to whether they really live on 14th Ave because we know they don't live there. But you guys help them get fake ID so they can say they're a Patterson resident because we do it in North, they do it in East Orange. This is what y'all do. So now you got folks in here from suburbia who don't like how our children act. That's the bottom line. They don't like the Latino kids, and they sure don't like the little darkies. OK? So now they come in here, they kids out of control, but they want to whoop our behinds. And you have no control. You ain't watching, and you don't care, because it ain't came to your door yet. So let's fast forward six months, summertime. Your kids hanging out at the damn 7-Eleven. Your kids get the job downtown, sweeping up with the little uh, downtown improvement BS, because we got that crap in North too. Paying them the littlest wages they can pay them. And I'm sure you're going to holler out, oh, they make $15 an hour. Nobody can't live on no damn $15 an hour. When you talk about livable wage, $15 an hour is only $600 a week. Can't nobody pay no real rent with that. And you're allowing all the developers to come in and gentrify the city. You cleaning up downtown, what about the neighborhoods? What the roads look like? Guess what, because I'm doing the same thing in New York. So don't sit here and try to blow smoke up my behind. I've been hanging out in Patterson a long time. I remember when Mr. Sayer was chasing us around his family group. I remember before he even got the board seat. So we, I know where many of y'all come from, my friend Mr. Valer, I remember. Hanging out with us at the family conference in New Brunswick, I know y'all. So I'm putting y'all on notice. I know y'all. You weren't doing nothing before you got there. You damn sure ain't doing nothing now. Maybe with the exception of Miss Cotton. Because at least we came down to the hearing when they talked about housing. Y'all ain't came to nothing. I didn't see nobody else come in talking to the assembly committee about public housing, low-income housing. Y'all want to keep talking about this daggone affordable. So now, present day, you done killed the baby. You done killed this other baby, because that's on your hands, too. You know why? Because y'all ain't watching bail reform. How the hell we got out? Because your police department ain't doing their damn job. Oh, the mayor, the administration is over there. No, the hell they not. Y'all approve the directors of every department. Who y'all talking to? Now, your regular folk might don't know how this game goes, but I'm the expert. Expert. Y'all approve everyone you bring in here. Treat them dumb, dumber, and dumbass. Yes, 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 Ain't asking the necessary questions, haven't said anything. Because it ain't touched your door yet. Well, God help you when it does. Because you're going to be coming to these same people that's sitting out here. You're going to be calling the Donna Jackson and the Get It Done crew to help you. Because these officers have no regard. And I don't see anybody up there that look like them. And see, when you bring folks into your community that don't look like you, you got a business owner stood up here. Y'all, don't you know you got a problem with a business owner? 
See, let them tell we don't get along. He asked about black. We beefing. Ain't no beef. The man just said, get it together. So when y'all keep voting to do dumb stuff that you know the average Patterson you can't afford, and now you're killing children on top of that, well, I'm telling y'all the world is watching. And the way y'all set up in here today, the way this council meeting went, if you're tabling something off the agenda, you don't read the item. What, y'all need to go to class for training? If it's off the agenda, it's off the agenda. No need to read it. So it was BS to waste time to cause the family to get angry because you changed the order of business. I'm finishing. Because you changed the order of business at the last meeting. You know these folks don't regularly come here. You know they don't know the process. So today, because you didn't want to hear it, you know the police downstairs with the door locked. You know the dogs is out there. You know the ambulance is out there. You know the, air, the, the motorcycles are there. The police is five blocks back. Okay. Five blocks back, those police out there. Ms. Jackson. And you got crime in this town. I hear you. Y'all got crime in this town, just like we got in North. You play the game that crime is down, which is all BS. But you got 100 police in this building tonight to see if I came here with some keys and a wallet and a phone charger in my pocket. Are you kidding me? You see the public like criminal, and you better knock it off because I will be back. And you'll never know when I'm gonna show up. Okay. But next time we maybe need to ring the brownies to y'all door because y'all don't understand. See, and here we think you safe because y'all can lock us in. Yeah. But what we gonna do when we show up on the lawn? Thank you. Next speaker, Mr. Freeman. Good evening, Kimmy Freeman, Third Ward. Um, I came to the last meeting and I was going to speak about the issues I normally speak about. But this issue has resonated and excited this city to the point where I do have to say something. Uh, first of all, I knew uh, Jameek Lowry. As a teacher at school six, I taught him for three years. Uh, I know his mother, I know his family, I know his friends, and as I told uh, Mr. Jay from the Patterson Times, I'm from the fourth ward. I've only lived in the third ward 20 years of my 59 years here in Patterson. So I grew up in the fourth ward. I know the issues that affect our kids in the fourth ward. And Jameek was just one of my boys who came to the after school program, or I had to deal with him at school six under Dr. Fulmore. And we had very innovative programs there that I've been telling this council for the past 10 years. Prior to 2000, that was one of my students. T.J. Bass was one of my students. And Chris Irving, one of my students. I taught them politics. I know politics very, very well. But nobody will listen to me. I've been saying for the past 10 years that we need more resources to address some of the issues and some of the th factors that are causing some of this chaos. And as a black man in America, I can say this, and Casey stole my, my, uh, my statement, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. As a black man in America, I am afraid. I have a son. I'm afraid for him. I have five grandsons. I'm afraid for them. And then when we had the, the rights of pass program, I taught the boys how to deal with the police so that something won't escalate to the point where there's a death. Now, I started coming to this city council meeting 10 years ago when four of my boys got killed on the streets of 4-4, all right? I've been asking for the child curfew for 10 years, for 10 years. And the Bilal, Bilal Hakeem was supposed to bring the information I was supposed to give to Dr. Mims because he's the only one who has even asked me about this child curfew. And I'm dead serious about it. I'm from the fourth ward, all right? I'm an ex-school teacher, all right? Live in the fourth ward. I'm in the fourth ward 90% of the time. I live in the third ward. But I'm still concerned about kids in the fourth ward. I work with uh, Reverend Boyer, Boy Scouts. Been doing it 22 years. Bringing kids from the ghetto to camp teaching them how to shoot, fish, do everything else. I've been doing that, all right? 
But when I come up here, nobody says nothing. Nobody, you know, it's just, with this boy dying, and he's one of my boys, just like them four other boys. And I'm asking the council and the mayor that they better get to the bottom of this because, and I've led uh, other movements. You know, Brother Zelly right here, Brothers for Awareness. I started that at Willie Patterson, all right? I led plenty of protests. Thank God I didn't get arrested. But I was willing to get arrested because when Lawrence Meyer got killed and then some other boys got killed, we were at PCC in the Black Student Union. We led the protest. The students led the protest. So I'm asking the elected officials, I'm asking where's the NAACP? Where's the other black uh, organization or any organization that cares about black people, black, black kids, and our kids in the, in, in the fourth ward? All right? So I'm being redirected. Thank you. The child Mr. curfew. Freeman. And the speeding, Mike is not here, but I caught him speeding on Bridge Street, 40 miles an hour. Okay. All right? I know he got a big car. I Thank got you, well. Mr. But Freeman. this is not going to end. And somebody has to be held accountable. If that was my son, I'd be raising pure hell. And I'm, you know, I'm praying for the mother. I know the mother. And like I said, the fourth ward, I'm a fourth ward. I live in the third. And this is not going to end. And we have to do something. Thank All right? You. We have Thank to you. do something. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Next speaker is Mr. Taylor. Mike Taylor. Mr. Taylor. Is it Mike Taylor? Yes. 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 Good evening. Good evening. My name is Michael Taylor, International High School Parent of the Year. I come to the um, city council meetings because of my daughter dealing with um, bullying issues and Patterson Board of Education. Before I go, in, go any further, I would like to say and give acknowledgement to Corporal Lurks of the Patterson Police Department on giving, giving my, treating my daughter with respect when she had her um, bullying issue. I want to say thank you to Mr. Rivera, Councilman Rivera, and Councilman Velez for hearing me out on the side pertaining to the HIV letter I gave you and spoke to you about, mm -hmm. far as the lack of integrity and um, the Board of Education pertaining to bullying issues. And before I go any further, I would like to say rest in peace and condolence to the girl who committed suicide, Samara, because I don't want to forget that issue and just let that go by. And my thing is that integrity, integrity. And I, I noticed and observed the lack of integrity in the Patterson Board of Education and Ms. Schaefer saying to the parents, and I'm speaking for all the parents that have dealt with bullying issues when they get the bogus, bogus HIV letter saying that Ms. Schaefer and the Board of Ed reviewed, investigated situations when they don't investigate situations. So when they don't investigate situations, you got kids uh, being forced to go to school and the situations is not being resolved. And they fake out the parents saying it's bullying when they know the New Jersey anti-bullying law, is, it may consider the conflict. So I'm speaking for the parents as I did at the parents forum, thank you Elizabeth, the parents want resolutions. They want issues resolved. So I'm coming to you, you uh, once again pertaining to the um, HIV situations before another child decides to take a drastic measures like the um, child did in the past. And these examples of the prison school to prison pipeline when these issues don't get resolved. <laughs> children, the issues is being reversed. Children is defending themselves, catching charges. With my daughter, the HIV coordinator suggests me to press charges on the baby girl. I said I didn't want to press charges. Then when I didn't press charges, charges was, char charges was put on my daughter. I seen a parent come to the Board of Education meeting saying their child was being bullied. Then they put diaphus on 
put diapers on the parent. So I'm putting it on y'all to hold the Board of Education accountable. And I'm going back to integrity. And I, I wish the mayor was here because I would like to speak to him direct, but I got to speak anyway because I don't know I'll have enough time. The thing is integrity. This whole incident, rest in peace, Jeremy, and to the family. This way I want y'all to feel and understand that this is where y'all being held accountable. I made a video, I did make the video, one of my friends made a video, he was live, and I said y'all was, y'all, um, the, the Board of Education, the Police Department, the City Council, all of y'all corrupt. I want to say I apologize to y'all sincerely, but I want y'all to prove me wrong. Because right now in the city of Pasadena, ain't nobody trusting none of the agencies that are supposed to protect and serve us. Mr. Taylor. Listen, no, please let me continue. This is, this is what's going on as far as integrity is that nobody, oh, I'm hearing discussions throughout the town. Ain't nobody dis, um, trusting the fire department who's connected to the situation, the EMT, the ambulance, the hospital. You got people scared, they scared to go to the hospital. And, and I, this is why I wanted to address the mayor, that I, I felt his energy. I went to his inauguration. He was doing a good job. But by one mistake, when he said that child had meningitis, then he come back to say he don't. Then now, even the health department Mr. is Mr. um. Mr. Taylor, I'm going to respect. respect much respect. But I need Mr. to get this, Taylor, and I won't come no more. Then the health department is um, involved with it now, saying there's a health scare with 38 people being checked for meningitis. The, the mayor should have, they don't have the respect for the mayor. He should, I never seen nobody lie on the mayor like that. It's about integrity. You cut me off, uh, Madam President, but this is real fast what's going on with the community. Mr. Now, Pepper, I apologize. I'm not you off. I'm saying respectfully for you, your time is up, and I'm asking okay. you to please run. Okay, up. thank you much. But this, y'all need to, y'all got to do something because nobody don't trust y'all. Thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker is uh, Mr. Elvis Durham. Elvis. Mr. Elvis Durham. I wish the mayor was here, but I know he had to step out. Some of the councilors had to step out. Wow. Okay. But 25,000 people is watching this. And I'm going to say some things that Nobody else was the same. Guess a lot of people was kind of afraid. The FBI is taking this case, believe it or not. I want to say this to the mayor, Andre Sayer. You got kids at home. You got a family. You got a wife. Don't listen to the people that's whispering in your ear. Respect the community. I know when you came, the beca became mayor, you said you was gonna make this city at one Patterson. <laughs> and it's still early, I'm not judging. What I'm trying to say is, forget the Democrat party. <laughs> if they push me in your head, say, oh no, 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 cover up, do no, do this, do this. No, do your job, mayor. The people voted for you. The people. You see, I know, I know this young man. I didn't know too much about him, but I used to be in Mega Fried Chicken, doing outreach, promoting, pass, it, pass out my flies. Y'all know me. And he used to come in there, church man, pray for me. I said, yeah, I pray for you. But that day, the last time I seen him, he had fear in his eyes. He said, church man, pray for me. I said, yeah, I pray for you. And I felt something. I said, why they pay no mind? So I said, wow. So I had prayed for I said, God, just protect him. Whatever going on, just protect him. Make a long story short, city council, y'all got family. Some of y'all can sit there all y'all want. Oh, that's Elvis. Y'all got family. Don't listen to no NWACP. No Democrat party, which means y'all is, 
If y'all got any information to give up to the FBI when they come in here, give it up. Because you do not want to go down. I told y'all this back here in April, the FBI was going to investigate what was investigating the police department. Five months later, five officers got arrested, right? Right or wrong? Okay, I'm telling y'all right now. Family, God got y'all back. God, God got y'all back. And guess what? Every officer is not bad. We got some new officers right here. They don't have nothing to do with it. It's time for some, it's time for some of them officers that, that's in, in the suit, it's time for them to retire. And let these guys take over. But we the people. We got the power, people. Don't stop coming out here. Don't stop protesting. Woo! We got the power. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. We pay taxes. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Madam President, there's no other speaker on the public portion. Motion. Motion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So move. Do I have a second? Okay. Move to close the public portion by Councilman Kalik. Second by Councilwoman Mims. Roll call to close the public portion. Roll call to close the public portion. Councilman Kalik? Yes. Councilman McCoy? Yes. Councilman Mims? Councilman Rivera? Yes. Madam President? Yes. The vote is five in favor, four absent. The public portion is now closed.